Hey guys, hope you're having a good spring break. So far, mine's off to an interesting start. I can't see out of my right eye, and my head is bumping. I have a nice migraine, um, which is good. I'm glad I saved my sicknesses for when I am on break. It's good, so I don't have to worry about making sub plans or anything. Uh, anyways, so here's the ozone instructions. Here's a little background on ozone in case you haven't been studying. Uh, ozone, two different types. You have the good ozone up in the, uh, up in the, where is it, the stratosphere? Yeah, yeah, up in the stratosphere, way up there. And then the bad ozone, too close to the ground, can be harmful for you. It gives you a lot of uh, respiratory irritation. Uh, that's in the troposphere, right? So that's, uh, that's kind of what this is looking at right here. All right. So here's kind of what goes into it. Noxes plus VOCs and sunlight can create can create ozone in the troposphere that'll stay there, right? So the VOCs kind of present uh, they prevent the natural daylight cycle from from reversing the formation of ozone. So you end up with too much in the air. All right. All right. So just keep in mind that it's good for you. Um, it's good for our environment just when it's in the right part of the atmosphere, right? It can also be used as an alternative to chemical cleaning in wastewater treatment facilities. Look here. Ozone generators, there's various forms of ozone generators, can kill biological things like mold, right? Instead of using bleach, an alternative to chemicals like bleach, we can use ozone. That's really, really important. I've seen that on AP exams. Ozone can be used in, in, um, as, as a substitute for bleach. All right, so just here's some more stuff. They can use it in restaurants too. Um, they can kill uh, scents, harm, uh, bad odors. All right, here's some ways to detect it with some strips, an ozone badge. This is what we're gonna be using, some strips that some of your classmates made. Here's the equation for potassium iodide and the water in the air. We'll separate out and, uh, we'll, and rearrange with ozone and give you molecular iodine, oxygen, and potassium hydroxide, which is a base, right? So we're doing something very similar to like what your cabbage pH strips look like, right? Okay, so this is kind of what we're doing. What I want you guys to do, yeah, here's all the stuff here. It's fun, fun stuff. Okay, what I want you guys to do is, we've already done all this, don't worry about all that, is I want you to take your strips, label them on the day that you use them. So the day, Location, time, remember you have to keep these out for about eight hours, right? So time start, time finish, and then I want you to look at the humidity for the day. All that stuff matters, right? And if you want, you can even look up the, you can look up the ozone for the day too. You're going to end up with colors that range in this light brown yellow all the way to this darker reddish brown yellow. Um, our strips were not doing this nice purple, right? So you're going to have to look at this Schoenbein number here and that's going to be really determined by not only just the color but also the humidity as well. All right, so let's look here. Okay, so indoor, you see the difference between indoor and outdoor. We're going to be using this curve here to kind of calculate our stuff. Our Schoenbein number right here is only half of the calculation of how much ozone is in the air. So if I had a 1, but the humidity is up in the around 30, between 30 and 40%, I'd have to go up and find that 30% line and see the ozone parts per million would be here. You notice how it's different, though, depending on the humidity. All right. So you're going to have to look up what the humidity is for the day and you do that by using, if I can, there we go, weather.gov, okay, weather.gov. Okay, so from there, you're gonna calculate, you're gonna calculate that. You don't necessarily need to use the Schoenbein number thing right now, we're gonna, we're gonna do that in class. For right now, you just need to get the humidity, the location, the time, and the day that you did it. Okay. <clears throat> and then we can look at the, we're, we're gonna be determining the air quality based on the ozone. Keep in mind that the green is good, obviously green is usually pretty good, yellow moderate, unhealthy for sensitive groups in orange. So if you have asthma, this is where you can start getting triggered, right? You start getting triggered asthma attacks. Red is gonna be unhealthy, purple very unhealthy, and maroon is hazardous. All right, good luck.